Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. This is Ion Assault from German developer CorePlay. This game normally retails for $10, but it can be had right now as part of the Indie Gala number six. Head over to IndieGala.com for all the details on that. We are playing this game for one reason, or should I say we're playing it for one individual. That is Alexis Donovan, who posted this comment on my Indie Gala 6 and Second Chance Gala giveaway video. Nice video, Big Dave. Why, thank you. I'm wondering if Ion Storm alone is worth the price of this bundle, though. Well, let's find out. Here we go. Let's press the spacebar to continue. Welcome to Ion Assault. Welcome to Ion Assault. I love that voice because it's so out of place in the middle of an intense battle, but she talks to you when you hit certain milestones or get power-ups, so it's really funky. Uh, but it kind of works. I guess it's that sort of computer voice, you know? They're going for this slick, futuristic uh, look, so I guess it works as a computer voice, but it's really weird when she says stuff to you in the heat of battle. <laughs> so this is a dual-stick shooter. It's arena-based. Yes, think Geometry Wars uh, and other such games, Waves, etc., etc. You've played games like this. This is not an innovation. The innovation in this game actually comes in in some of the gameplay elements, particularly the particle effects. So let's go ahead and get right into things and take a look at it. I've played about 10 minutes of this game just to make sure that everything works. It does automatically detect and work with your Xbox 360 controller. However, the menus don't. I am manipulating my 360 controller right now and nothing is happening. Uh, but I can start game with the mouse. So here we go. So the number one thing with this game, the number one attraction uh, that makes it unique, are you see all these particles that are kind of floating around. You can suck them in, and then you can shoot them out. I guess that would be the titular Ion Storm. Um, for some reason, this looks familiar. This mechanic looks familiar, but I can't place what other game I might have seen in it. If you're recalling what other game uses this sort of mechanic, please let me know in the comments below. I will love you long time. But this mechanic actually really works nicely. I like the way that it uh, it encourages movement around the level. Most games like this encourage movement by throwing so many enemies at you that you have no choice but to run. Uh, in this case, you actually need to gather up enough particles to charge the little uh, crescent that is around the outside of your ship. And uh, as you can see, as I gather more particles, that crescent becomes more and more charged until it shows me that I am now full up on particles and I can unleash a devastating shot. The other really, really cool thing is that the particles swirl around you and as they're swirling around you, they can do damage to nearby things. Really nice. It's just, it's a nuanced sort of thing that uh, a lot of games could have missed, you know, a, a lot of game designers designing this game could have missed something like that, that ability for those particles to damage things as they swirl uh, into you in an ever-decreasing orbit. Uh, but it's it's really an interesting take on, on the genre here that they've done, and I think they hit a lot of things right. Uh, overall, though, I will say, even in my short time with the game, it feels a little bit repetitive. Uh, but hopefully later on, things will sort of spice up. But let's go ahead and finish... Oh, my lord, there's a snake thing there. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up this level, as I was about to say, and uh, and we can, we can move on, and we can see some of the more challenging segments. Uh, initially, in this uh, box world, apparently my job is to destroy asteroid rocks. Uh, they contain some sort of power-up that I suppose I need for score or something. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much early on, I'm just sort of a demo man, basically. I'm destroying rocks, and occasionally some ships will come along to pester me and try to uh, dissuade me from my rock-destroying duties. Uh, so let's go ahead and finish this off. Enough talking. Uh, you will notice these... Um, these particles, they bounce and bound around when they hit things. Really nice, because they can pop back when they are charged, and they can do damage. So, for instance, this rock, uh, if I don't hit it directly, but I hit the wall up here, 
you can see that I can destroy that rock just by bouncing uh, the ion particles around it. And that's a really nice touch. Again, I think they got a lot of little things right with this game. They they definitely made some good and uh, and and very interesting decisions uh, with how they implemented things in this game. And, and I'm really liking a, a lot of what I'm experiencing here, most definitely. Um, you know, this is this is definitely uh, a, a ten buck game. You know, it's got that kind of feel to it. I think that there's enough here to uh, to justify the full price of this game. I really, really do. Um, and that's just from playing it for about ten or fifteen minutes. You know, you guys are going to be the judge of that for yourself as we play through the next couple of levels. And uh, you know, it is available in the Indie Gala number six right now, so that's kind of a no-brainer. But uh, let's go to hyperspace and let's see uh, what we think about the next level and beyond. So, uh, quick score recap: you can see uh, destroyed this in my previous attempt here with the ninety-six thousand. Uh, wasn't talking to a microphone in that previous attempt either, so uh, that would explain a lot of. Of that Entering battlefield. again that is very clunky I have to go back to the mouse uh, if I want to select things you can just hit a to go to the next menu so uh, you know you don't have to use the mouse but if there are multiple options on the screen that you have to select from then you start to get into having to use the mouse so it's not a complete fail they they do recognize the inputs of the buttons at least uh, when you're on the uh, on the uh, menus, so it's it, it works in that sense. But yeah, overall, I wish that they would have had uh, just the the up and down functionality on the controller itself. This game, you know, really, I, I I do continue to be impressed by it as I play it. You can see here there is a rock with a power up. Again, we are some sort of cosmic ion particle rock miner, uh, I guess. And occasionally, these rocks have super special power-ups and, and again that is going to be one of the places where any game brings in its originality in those power-ups and uh, giving you those abilities to do interesting and uh, destructive things in many cases as we have some slightly more aggressive enemies here they kind of do my same gimmick they gather up ions and they will fire them at me so let's grab that plasma taurus uh, this is one of those really, uh, really interesting power-ups that takes advantage of that uh, swirl effect that I was talking about earlier. The way that uh, charged ions that are swirling around you will damage uh, enemies and uh, space rocks. So uh, let's actually, let's do a little bit of that. Here we go. Look at that. Quite impressive, actually. Really, really nice. And the game is supposed to have some sort of dynamic difficulty. Uh, so the better you do, the harder it will get. Uh, really unclear on that. I mean, there's not a lot of specifics as to how that's implemented. Uh, but it does seem to do that. If you're just kind of moving slowly and not really uh, not really doing anything, meandering, uh, as my grandmother would say, then you, you will get uh, leniency. But if you are moving through quickly and you're destroying the rocks in a very quick fashion, they do seem to throw some uh, enemies at you more frequently. Power shield. Pow, pow, power shield. Ooh, rock. Okay. Uh, the rocks don't kill you on contact. It would seem you kind of bounce. Well, I have the power shield right now, so not the best time to show that. You kind of bounce off of them. Uh, I, you know, it's it's nice that the rocks don't, don't sort of one-shot you. Um, it's always kind of... I don't want to say disheartening, but it's always a little bit frustrating when the decision that a game designer makes is to have... Uh, single hit death. Now, there are certain games where that's absolutely necessary to really drive home the challenge and, and the fun of the game, uh, but that's not every game. It's really not. So, uh, games like this, I do like it if you have maybe a second chance, you know, a shield or something that gives you a second hit. In this case, the rocks uh, not killing you on instant impact, I think is a pretty good decision from a design uh, perspective. So, no complaints there. We are heading into hyperspace once again. I'm not Again, sure on the sort of story progression. We are in Echelon territory, apparently. Uh, destroying their rocks. They call it a battlefield, but it really seems a lot more like a mining operation to me. But, you know, okay. Uh, obviously, these little sort of geode-looking rocks with the power-ups in them are a good first target for you to go after. You can hold multiple power-ups, as you can see right there. And you can then switch back and forth between your active power-ups. I'm doing that with the right uh, mouse bumper. Not the trigger, but the bumper. So let's actually... What power-up was that? I missed it. 
Oh, it's the Vortex. A lot of impressive visuals in this game. A lot of impressive visuals. And impressive visuals that tie directly into the gameplay. And that's not something that you can always achieve in a game like this. You know, there are certain games uh, like this that just look good. Like, all right, this game looks good. Damn, I was trying to be really cool and shoot that right as I went through it, but... Fiddlesticks. Lost my power-ups, and I'm on my last life. So again, you know, the visuals are a part of this game. They are a part of how this game works. The particle effects aren't just pretty, they are your weapon uh, in the game. And I think that that's a, that's a really, really interesting choice, and it's a really interesting way to, uh, to approach game design. You know, the graphics aren't just there to be pretty, they're actually a, a, an effective weapon for you as the player. So I think we're pretty much done with Ion Assault. I mean, you can see what this game is. I think it does iterate on its theme a little more as it goes forward. It gets a little bit more hectic. It gets a little bit more diverse. Uh, but this is pretty much what you what you get. The gimmick, the unique gimmick, uh, and I hesitate to use the word gimmick because gimmick to me somehow tends to indicate that there's some trickery involved. Uh, but the unique gimmick is definitely uh, the particle effects. I think they pull that off really well. And uh, I don't really have any complaints uh, on the game as a whole uh, other than what I've, uh, I've sort of cited for you, the, the minor complaints about the menu system. All in all, really impressed by Ion Assault. Is it worth the price of the Indie Gala number no. 6 alone? I have to say, I, I kind of think yes. I, I kind of think yes. Interesting. So let's go ahead and... Ooh, gravity boost. I forgot about that power-up. Very nice. Sort of a passive power-up that just kind of lets you suck everything in. And shoot it out. Really, really nice. Again, these are some of the lowest settings for the game. Still looks absolutely brilliant. Really big thumbs up for Ion Assault. Uh, and that's kind of a surprise, uh, to a certain extent, coming from Core Play. These guys, you might remember, are responsible for the questionable remake of Jagged Alliance, the back-in-action remake of uh, one of my favorite all-time turn-based uh, combat games, Jagged Alliance. Uh, they kind of won a little redemption with this game, I have to say. They're also currently working on a fantasy... Uh, action RPG, which looks like it has a little bit of promise. An interesting German developer here. They've done some strange stuff, like some uh, fit games for the Wii uh, that were released apparently only over in Germany. And uh, then they've done things like this, and uh, as well as Jacket Alliance back in action. So if you were interested in the Indie Gala, you have about 12-ish uh, days left to grab it. And of course, I will be doing a second chance giveaway for the Indie Gala number 6 when the Indie Gala number 7 comes out, but please, if you're interested in the Gala, don't wait for my giveaway, because as you can see from the response to the current Gala second chance giveaway, uh, the competition is getting stiffer. <laughs> there was once a day here on Big Dave is Cheap where I put up a contest with four prizes and three people entered, uh, but now it would appear that uh, word has gotten out, at least when it comes to me giving away free stuff, and uh, people are actually coming to see me. So uh, hello to all the new subscribers. Hello to everybody who uh, may be watching hoping to be given something for free. Uh, you will occasionally get that. That's the sort of person that I am. So hang around, subscribe if you would like to. Comment, like, favorite, all that stuff that YouTube people tell you to do. Uh, hang out here long enough and you will learn that I am not your normal sort of YouTube person. I'm just a guy who enjoys doing this, who enjoys playing games, and enjoys sharing games like Ion Assault that you might not otherwise have had on your radar. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave. This has been Ion Assault. And until next time, take it easy.